Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Moffitt. I'm an account executive here at AEC Software. And I'm gonna be your presenter today uh, for our walkthrough of Fast Track Schedule 10. Uh, the format of this walkthrough is split up into three different parts. Um, in the first part, we're gonna go through some of the main features of the program, talk about the three main views in Fast Track Schedule. Then in the second part, we're gonna flip to a blank schedule, go through some of the nuts and bolts of the program, um, as well as some of the fundamentals of building out a schedule from scratch. And then in the third part, uh, we're going to talk about some reporting features in Fast Track Schedule, including filters, layouts, and consolidation. Before we jump on into the software, I just want to go over briefly a little bit about uh, the company and the software in general. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with AEC software, AEC has been building project management solutions for almost 25 years now. And we're actually on the 10th version of Fast Track Schedule. Uh, Fast Track is the top ranked cross platform project management application on the market today. Uh, we have quite a large market share on the PC side, as well as more Mac users than any other project management tool. Um, and hopefully, the first thing you'll notice today as we go through the program and as you work through it uh, through the program on your own is that Fast Track is very intuitive and very easy to use. Uh, we understand that not all of our uh, users are well versed and are veterans in project management or project management software. Uh, so we want everybody to be able to jump right in, uh, get started, and kind of learn some more of the advanced features on the go rather than having that large learning curve at the beginning. Uh, while Fast Track is very user-friendly, it's also very powerful. It allows you to store all your project data in one centralized place, then effectively present that data to others, whether they be clients, potential clients, coworkers, etc. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right on into the program. And the file we're going to work with at the beginning today um, is an example file that's actually built into the demo version, the full version, and listed um, on our, our website, aecsoftware.com, in the template section. Uh, it's called Multiple Homes. And just to show you where you can actually grab this when you open up the software, when you first open up Fast Track, you'll have the option of choosing from a new schedule, open up a pre existing schedule, or working a, from a schedule from templates. And here you'll be able to choose through some blank templates you can work off of. As well as some complete example files that'll show you, uh, you know, a finished product, uh, finished product in Fast Track schedule and what Fast Track really is capable of. Uh, the one we're going to be working with at the beginning today is multiple homes, and it's found right here. So, getting into the three main views of Fast Track schedule, uh, what we're looking at right now is called the schedule view. This is where you're going to be spending the vast majority of your time in the program, uh, creating your task lists, entering data in your information columns working with your Gantt chart, doing most of your reporting. That's all pretty much going to take place in this schedule view. On the far left of the schedule view, you'll see our first information column, and it's also probably our most important column. It's called our activity name column. This is where you're going to be creating the task list for your project or projects. So as you can see here, um, this part of this multiple homes schedule is called Lot 322 Cranes House, our overall project name. As soon as you go underneath that, you'll see some of the beginning tasks in our project, our draw number one, accept lots, stake lines and grades, etc. You also see when we get down to foundation and backfill, we've actually created a separate phase in our project and some different subtasks within that, that overall task of foundation and backfill. So as you can see, these footings, footings inspection, footings, slab on grade and walls are all at a different outline level and are within that phase. Uh, we'll go over a little bit more how to actually set up these tasks as we build out a schedule from scratch. Uh, but I just want to point out right now that Fast Track is uh, good for the most simple of projects all the way up to the most complex. Uh, if you want a schedule that's just going to have a task list that goes straight down without any indentations and no different subtasks or different phases, you can do that. Uh, but Fast Track will also allow you to indent up to 64 times uh, so you can have as complex a schedule as you need. Now, moving to the right of our activity name column, you'll see our Gantt chart. Uh, now, if you've worked with other project management software in the past, you're probably pretty, pretty familiar with the Gantt chart tool. Uh, but we like to think that the Gantt chart in Fast Track is quite a bit more useful uh, and definitely quite a bit more customizable than it is in other programs. So right off the bat, you'll notice that we have a couple different bar styles and bar, uh, bar styles and bar colors in our Gantt chart. In this example file, uh, these uh, different uh, the different phases of our project between the draws are shown by these different bar styles. You also see that we've put milestones into our project. Uh, now with milestones, you can use something as simple as a square, circle, or a diamond shape. 
uh, something a little bit more complicated, uh, like a dollar sign for the draws in the schedule. You can also import your own images. So if you want to use something like a company logo or others, some other complex image to use as your milestones uh, to spruce up your schedule, you can do that as well. You can also set up bar labels on the different bars and milestones in your project. And you can also format these bar labels to show any kind of information you want. Um, in this example file, uh, this bar is showing the end date and time of that task. And this bar, uh, bar label is showing uh, the start date and start time of that task. You can also put images directly into your Gantt chart. So if you want to put something like the finished product, uh, company logo, um, even you know um, some different pictures of the project as it's going along, you can insert those directly into the Gantt chart uh, before you report it to others or really just for your own reference. I'm going to show you kind of what another Gantt chart can look like in Fast Track. I'll flip to another example file built into the program. This one is called Orbital Earth Space Station. In this Gantt chart, you'll see it's a little bit simpler. I uh, really just have that one bar style, um, two different colors. You'll also see in this Gantt chart that we actually have a text box inserted into, into directly into the Gantt chart. Um, so these text boxes are useful if you just want to put a little note about a part of the Gantt chart. Um, and you can also use these little handy arrows to point to the specific part of the Gantt chart you're talking about. You'll see briefly here um, a company logo that's been inserted in for a milestone. And one final thing is that you'll see that you don't always have to put images directly into the Gantt chart. You can also use a special image column and link up these images with specific tasks in your project. Flipping back to uh, our original example schedule we're working with, uh, moving on from the Gantt chart. See the right of our Gantt chart, we have the beginnings of some of our data columns. Um, in Fast Track, you have a lot of presets and pre-built out columns that you can use uh, that we kind of put into the program knowing that most project managers were going to use them. Um, this example file, you'll see duration in days, revised duration in days, original estimate, revised estimate are all columns that are preset into the program. We also have the option of choosing and creating your own uh, custom text number and calculation columns in Fast Track. This example file, you'll see one calculation column of the variance in our schedule. Um, but you know, I'll go over a little bit more about how to set these up later. But it's worth noting that you know we do have a, a ton of these different uh, preset columns as well as a bunch of these unspecified columns. So you're never going to run out of space uh, to keep track of your data. One final thing I want to show you in the schedule view is um, something called summary graphs. Uh, summary graphs will appear at the bottom of your Gantt chart and take the information from our data columns and put them in either a bar or line graph format. Uh, this is really useful if you just want to um, you know, kind of see that information from your data columns in an easy to see graph, or if you're going to present it to others and you don't want them digging through all the information in our data columns. Now flipping to the second view of Fast Track Schedule, this view is called the calendar view. It'll take the bars and the tasks from our schedule view and put them on a traditional calendar. As you can see, it will also keep consistent the different bar colors that we had in our last schedule. So if you want to show these phases on here, you can do that as well. It'll also bring across your milestones as well as the work breakdown structure of the different tasks and milestones from your schedule view. I'll just note now that Fast Track does um, sync directly with iCal, Google Calendars, and Outlook. Um, so if those are something that you use to you know, set up reminders or, or follow your schedules on the go you know, when you're using your smartphone or tablet, uh, you can also export uh, uh, Fast Track files to those um, and set them up accordingly. Now the third view of Fast Track schedule is called the resource view. Uh, the resource view will allow you to keep track of a ton of different resources, whether they be contractors, subcontractors, in-house personnel, materials, equipment. Um, you can keep track of all of them in this view. Probably the most useful uh, feature of the resource view is uh, using it to spot over allocations in your schedule. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can see. When we're looking at Bob's excavation, we can go down and see all the different tasks that he's working on throughout the project. But we can also look over here and see what percentage of our day and how many hours uh, that resource is working each day. Now, in our default work schedule, um, eight, we have eight-hour workdays. 
So as we can see here, Bob's excavation is working 100% of the day, these first couple days of the task, or eight hours of our eight hour default workday. But as soon as we get to Friday the 29th, you see that we now have Bob's excava uh, excavation uh, overworked and over allocated. It is now working 200% of the day, or 16 hours in our eight hour workday. Uh, Fast Track will allow you just to quickly flip through all the different resources and all the different tasks they're working on, spot these over allocations, and then reassign the resources as needed so you don't have biting off any, uh, anybody biting off more than they can chew um, and not getting things done. So those are the three main views of Fast Track Schedule. Uh, but we do have one more, uh, what we like to call supplemental view, and that's print preview. Print preview will be your last step before um, either exporting or printing off your schedules to send off to others. Um, so this is where you'll be able to check exactly what your schedule is going to look like. Um, it'll also allow you to add in things like schedule titles, uh, company names, company slogans, company logos. Uh, you can also insert things like legends and images directly in right now. This will also be where you um, can format the different pages of your schedule. Uh, so if you want it to be displayed differently or show more or less tasks on an individual page, uh, you can do that here as well. So those are some of the main features of Fast Track as well as our three or three and a half views. Um, so now let's go ahead and flip to a blank schedule, go through some of the fundamentals of building out a schedule from scratch. Now for this example, we'll just go ahead and use uh, the example of building a house once again. So we will call our project, overall project name, house A. Then go down to the next row. All we have to do is press the enter or return key. And then to actually indent these tasks and put all the tasks within that overall project name, all we have to do is press the tab key or use these handy arrows up in our toolbar to indent the task and create a new outline level. So now let's go ahead and set up a quick task list for this house. The first task we'll do foundations, walls, roof, and interior. And then let's actually go create some subtasks within that interior phase just by simply pressing the tab button once again. And we can put in electrical and plumbing. So now we have our base, basic task list set up. Uh, let's go ahead and actually put these tasks onto our Gantt chart. Uh, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. Probably the easiest way is by simply entering in a duration for our tasks. And that will go ahead and put a bar directly onto our Gantt chart. Another way to set up these bars is by choosing a start and finish date. Finally, Fast Track is a, also a drawing tool. So if you'd like, you can actually just go in and draw the bars directly onto the Gantt chart. So as we can see here, um, all our tasks, uh, when they're put on the Gantt chart, uh, were automatically set up on our project start date. Now we know that you're not always gonna be just planning a schedule of the day that you start. Uh, so you'll also have the option in your project information tab of choosing a different start date. Um, so if you want everything to be started a week from now, a month from now, even a year from now, uh, you can set up that project start date and build off of that. We have encountered another problem here. Um, as you can see, we have all of our tasks for building this house starting on the same day. Uh, but as we know, um, you know, in most projects, you're not going to be able to start a task until the task before it has com been completed. Um, so in this case, you know, we're not going to start building the walls until the foundations are complete. Uh, we're not going to start working on our interior until we have a roof over our heads. So this is why we're going to have to set up some links and dependencies in our schedule. Once again, there's a couple different ways to set up these links. Uh, probably the, easy the easiest way and the way I like to do it is by either highlighting all the bars or highlighting all the rows of the tasks you want to link. Then going up here and just using our handy link tool to link the task straight down. Another way to set up these links is by actually going into our bar information tab, either by clicking in our information column on the far left, or by double clicking on any of the bars, going to our link section. And here you can choose the predecessors and successors for each task. So we can choose from a drop-down menu of all the tasks available to set those up. 
You can also do some formatting to these links once you have them set up. Um, so you can do that by either going back to that links tab we were just in or double clicking on links themselves. Here you'll have the option of setting up things like your lag lead time, uh, your type of link, as well as the information about the processors and successors and your link duration. So in this example, say we need an extra day between when the foundations are complete until we can start our walls, give some more time for the concrete to dry. So we'll go ahead and put in a lag of one day. And now that wall task will get moved back one day after the foundations are complete, giving us time for that, uh, that concrete to dry. Another thing we can do is change our link types. So say our electrical and plumbing should be started on the same day as soon as we get our roof uh, finished. All we have to do is choose the start to start link type. And now those tasks start on the same day. Now that we have all our links and dependencies set up in our schedule, uh, this is really where Fast Track Schedule becomes alive. Um, it'll allow you to move around the tasks in your project. Um, and then everything else that's linked to it behind it will get moved around as well. Um, this is really useful for what if scenarios. Um, so if you see a delay coming up in your project, uh, you can see how that's going to affect you time wise, budget wise, resource wise, etc. Now just to show you briefly how this revision, these revisions will work. If we push back our wall task by a day, as you can see, all the tasks behind it uh, will now get pushed back that day as well. You also notice that we have these pink revised bars show up. So now you can quickly look at your Gantt chart, see your original schedule dates and durations, but also see the new revised dates and durations um, because of that delay. Now you can also see all this information by going back to our bar information tab, seeing all the schedule start finish dates and times, as well as the revised start dates and finish times. Here you can also track your project as it goes along. So if we have completed our first task of foundations, we can go ahead and put in an actual duration of four days. And now that bar will turn completely green, showing us that task is complete. Now in the same way, if we want to show this task is only 50% complete, put that in there. And now only half of the bar will turn green, showing us that task is only 50% complete. There are a lot of other ways to track your project as it goes along. Most of them using different layouts and different columns in our schedule. We'll go over that in a little bit. We're actually working with some reporting features in our, in our uh, schedule. But for now, I want to spend some time going over how to insert and work with columns in Fast Track. Now to insert a new column into your schedule, all you have to do is go to the Insert tab up at the top, go down to Column. And here's that long list of columns that I mentioned at the beginning. As you can see, we have a bunch of these preset columns, as well as a ton of unspecified calculation, number, and text columns that you can uh, format for your own needs. For now, I'll just go ahead and put in our first preset column, our percent complete column. And you'll see here we have that information we entered in our bar information tab just a minute ago, shown in this column format. In the same way, if we want to show that this next task is 25% complete, put that in there. And now only a fourth of that bar will turn green. Now that we're done working with this column, to hide it, all we have to do is right click at the top, press hide, and now it disappears. But we want to bring it back and see that data once again. Choose to unhide, choose the column we want, and it'll come back with all your information intact. So now that we've set up our task list, enter in durations for our tasks, worked a little bit with the Gantt chart, worked a little bit with inserting and hiding columns, now let's flip over to our resource view and actually set up some resources for our schedule. So we'll just put in some simple names for these. I will do Bob, Tom, and Sue. And once we have our resource names added in, we can actually put in a lot of different information about these resources in our resource information tab. Here, as you can see, we can put in our uh, resource name again, put in things like uh, company address, company phone number, company email, um, the different types of resources we have. You can also insert images in, as you can see in our example file uh, for each resource. You can also uh, set up the different 
different costs and rates associated with each resource. Uh, so if you want to enter in information about a per use cost, standard rate, overtime rate, uh, Fast Track will then automatically calculate the cost associated with re each resource uh, depending on how many hours they're working on each task. So now that we have our resource set up, enter in a little bit of information about each one of them. We can flip back to our schedule view and go ahead and assign these resources to the tasks in our schedule. Probably the easiest way to do that is by inserting a column once again, choosing our resources assign column, then choosing from a drop down menu of all the resources we just created. You can also go back into your resource information tab, go to your assignment section, and choose from another drop down menu to assign the resources. Here also is where you will see things like the per use cost standard rate, overtime rate, and the full resource cost for the task uh, once you've entered that information in. So now we have all our resources assigned. Let's go ahead and flip back to a resource view. Expand these. And now we can see all the tasks each resource is working on, as well as how many hours and what percentage of the day um, each resource is working. So that's about all I want to go over in terms of building out a schedule from scratch. Um, so let's go ahead and take the last couple minutes in the webcast today uh, and talk about some reporting features in Fast Track. And to do that, let's go ahead and flip back to that multiple home schedule we're using at the beginning. And the first feature I'll go over is our layouts feature. Now we've worked a little bit with inserting and hiding columns one by one in our schedule, uh, but we're not always going to want to go through and, and do that for each individual column. Sometimes they're going to have want to have different subsets of columns and information and summary graphs, uh, depending on who we're presenting the schedule to and what we're working on. That's where layouts is going to come in handy. Now, like columns, there are a lot of layouts pre-built into the software. So just show you how these work. Uh, let's say that we have a boss that really just wants to see um, the most streamlined view, the most simple view of our schedule, just see our activity name column as well as our Gantt chart. We can choose our basic layout, and now those will be the only things that are showing. Let's say that we have somebody that's very interested in the cost associated with our project. We can choose our cost layout, and now those columns and summary graphs will be showing. So you can see here we have our fixed costs that we can enter in on a task-by-task -task basis, have our resource costs that are automatically calculated from that information we put in our resource view, as well as the uh, combined total costs per task and for the whole project. I did mention earlier that you can also use columns to track uh, actuals in your project. Here you can choose the tracking actuals layout and put that information in here as your project goes along. One final layout I'll show you is our iCal layout. Uh, this makes it easy for you just to put your information directly in, then export it and set it up in your iCal calendars. You can also create your own layouts in Fast Track. So if you go to the Layouts button, choose Define, New. And I'll just call this our webcast layout. You can then choose whatever columns and parts of the timeline graph you want to be shown in this. I'll just choose a couple for the sake of example. Press OK. And now those will be the only things that are showing. Once these layouts are created, they'll also be stored here so you can use them time and time again. Kind of the same vein as layouts uh, is another reporting feature called filters. Uh, filters will search through all the data um, in your data columns and uh, find specific information depending on a certain criteria. So once again, we have a bunch of filters that are pre-built into the program. So you can run a filter for all the tasks that are happening on the current day, all the tasks that are happening in the current week, next day, the next week, your critical items, things that are 0 to 99% complete, things that are 100% complete. You can also create your own filters. I don't have a whole lot of time to go over how to create filters today, um, but there are a couple custom filters that are built into this example file. Uh, so just to show you probably one of the most useful uh, ways you can use a filter is by filtering out tasks by resource. So if we choose our Bob's Excavation filter, now we'll only see the tasks 
that Bob's Excavation is working on over the extent of the, the project. Uh, this is really useful if you just want to send out reports to your resources um, and have them just see what they need to work on without worrying about everything else going on in the, the schedule. These filters will also carry over into our calendar view. So if you just want to send your resources um, a simple you know, calendar they can hang on their wall or keep on their desktop to see what they're working on a day-by-day -day basis, you can do that as well. Now to get rid of these filters, all you have to do is press the Restore All button in the bottom left, and you're back to normal. Now the last feature I want to go over today is definitely one of the most powerful features in Fast Track Schedule. It's called Consolidation. So let's say that we have um, a couple different project managers and a couple different teams working um, in our company. So we have a consulting team one uh, being scheduled on one file. And we have a consulting team two being scheduled in a different file. Now we want to keep these schedules segregated. Um, so you know each team isn't going to be seeing things they don't need to worry about. Uh, but we also want to get a bird's eye view of all the different projects and schedules that are going on in the company at one time. Uh, that is where consolidation is going to come in handy. So to start consolidation, we will open up a blank file to serve as our master file. We go to File, Consolidate, Define. Then we choose what schedules we want to be added into this master file. Choose to update all. And now we get that bird's eye view of the two schedules. Uh, this is really useful if you want to see what tasks are going on at the same time across multiple schedules, if you're using a, re, uh, uh, a resource pool across all your schedules, etc. Now, once we've created this master file, we're not, oh, not going to have to continuously uh, recreate this, this ma master file every time changes happen in the segregated files. So let's say a change happens in consulting team one. and the project manager saves the file. All we have to do to bring those changes into our master file is go to consolidate, get updates, and those will now be brought in. So you can keep this master file you know, in a separate folder, uh, check it once a day, once a week, uh, just to get an idea of how everything's going on. Um, you can also run filters on this consolidated view to see what tasks are delayed across all your projects um, and, and things like that. So that's about all I wanted to go over today. Uh, so what I'll do now just to, to finish up is put up my contact information. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me or anybody else here at AEC Software a call. I'd be glad to help you out. Uh, my direct line is 800-450-1981, extension 3013. You can also always shoot me over an email at rmoffett, M-O-F-F-E-T-T, -T, at aecsoftware.com. So thanks everybody for coming and please feel free to contact us if there's anything we can help you with as you're trying out Fast Track Schedule 10.